Hello everyone, it's Justin. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part two in me giving my initial thoughts on the Grand Prix assignments for the 2019-2020 figure skating season and I will be discussing the men's field today. But before I discuss the athletes and their assignments, I did want to touch up on ISU Communication 2253. If you don't know, ISU stands for the International Skating Union. It is the governing body of the sport and the judging system. So pretty much what Communication 2253 says is that there has been an update to the scale of values for the technical elements for this upcoming season. The main takeaway I got from it was that under-rotated jumps are now going to be worth more points than they have in the past. So in previous seasons, if a skater under-rotated a jump, they would only receive a base value of 70% of the points, but now it's going to be 80%. So the example I'm using is a triple axle is worth eight points, but if you under-rotate the triple axle, it'll be worth six points four points, which is more than in the previous season. I don't have an opinion either way on whether or not this is good or bad, if I like it, if I don't, but I do think it will make a difference because if you look at figure skating competitions and the results, some skaters win competitions or medals or barely make the podium by fractions of a point and every point matters, and a lot of the men who are competing are going for as many points as possible with quadruple jumps and triple axles and repeating these difficult jumps in a program. There's also the grade of execution factor to it, so I think it's gonna make a difference. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Let me know if you have an opinion one way or the other. So now let's talk about the skaters. The first thing I wanted to look at this morning when I saw the men's assignments for the first time, because yesterday was all about the ladies, not today, I wanted to look at Nathan Chen of the United States. I'm a fan of Nathan's. I'm American, despite everyone assuming I'm Canadian. I'm not. I wish I was. <laughs> but Nathan Chen last year was undefeated. He won both of his Grand Prix events, the final nationals, and the World Figure Skating Championship. So we American fans are so spoiled to have such a strong man competing in the circuit. It will be interesting to see what his strategy is this season with his uh, coaching team because last season he started off pretty light on the quad jumps. I think he was just performing toes and sow cows. Later on he added back in the quad flip, quad lutz, and his triple axle was really good last season. So let's hope all of those are consistent and it, it will be interesting to see his plan mainly because he's still going to be balancing school, training with Rafael Artunian from a distance over Skype and competing internationally. Whatever he did last year, it seemed to work. I hope he does it again. I imagine we'll see similar programs, maybe a fun short program and something a little more serious for the free skate. It wouldn't hurt to change things up, but I'm not sure if he will. So. We will have to see. The next big gun I want to discuss would be Shoma Uno from Japan. Now, he will be going up against Nathan Chen at the International de France, and so I'm not going to place bets <laughs> on who will win that competition, but Nathan Chen, I believe, will win his competition at Skate America, and Shoma Uno is assigned to Cup of China. I am going to assume he will easily win that as well. Shoma Uno is interesting because he's kind of a hot and cold skater between competitions, and a lot of that has to do with consistency. There are a few reasons why this could be the case. One would be he goes for so many different kinds of quads. It's amazing to see, but it's got to be so hard to train and to do in competition. So not only does he do quad toe, quad sao cow, but he goes for the quad loop and the quad flip, which is so incredible. I don't know how he does it. Uh, there's also questionable technique many times on his jumps. I know some of my friends are good at spotting pre-rotations. I'm not, but clearly that can be an issue. I just clearly see that his landings can be so dicey sometimes, and I don't know, he's so small. He kicks off the toe pick so hard to get into the air. I'm just so amazed he's able to save his jumps. They don't always look pretty, but sometimes he gets them done. So. He earns the points that way. Also, we'll expect some really lyrical programs, and we'll see the cantilevers. That's always a classic move from Shoma. Speaking on technique, so it was just announced that he is leaving his longtime coach in Japan, which is actually kind of 
shocking news to be doing a jumping summer camp in Russia. And it has not been announced whether or not he has found a new coaching team. This is all really new to me. It could affect his season if his new coaching team decides to rework the technique on his jumps. So I don't know what to expect from Shoma this season, but he is, he is a crowd favorite. And who else is a crowd favorite? Who's actually his teammate is two-time reigning Olympic champion Yuzuru Hanyu, the great god of figure skating. I've said this before and I will say it again. We are living in such an amazing time that the two-time Olympic champion is still competing on the Grand Prix circuit. Yuzuru Hanyu just, ugh, just exudes like phenomenal qualities every time he steps onto the ice. He's not always perfect. He does have off competitions and sometimes they're really off, but usually he always wins the medal. I expect to see him at the Grand Prix final. Let's see what else. We will be looking to see if Yuzuru Hanyu will be attempting the quad axle. That seems to be one thing he's really hungry for right now. And knowing Yuzuru Hanyu, he wants to create history and break his own record. And that's something he's total, totally capable of doing. So I'm so excited to see if slash when he'll attempt it this season. But yeah, that is incredible. Nathan Chen, Shoma Uno. Yuzuru Hanyu, I consider those the main top guns for the men's discipline this season. But just underneath that, I do want to consider Mikhail Kolyada from Russia a top gun too, based on his potential. He's had a rough past few seasons. He came on so strong and then it seemed like he just lost his game for a little bit. It could have been an injury. I'm not totally up to date with the news on how his training has been going. But when he lands his jumps, they are so beautiful. He either does a really perfect jump, like the quad lets. I think when that's done by Mikhail Koliata, it's one of the best in the world. Other jumps, if something's slightly off, it just seems like the rest of the program goes. But it's a new season. He's had the summer to train. I think Mikhail Koliata can regain some momentum. I'm going to be rooting for him. He has two Grand Prix assignments. So I'm really excited for that. So the next thing I want to discuss for the Grand Prix assignments would be the opportunities for the Canadian men. A few of them have two assignments, Keegan Messing, Nam Nguyen, Roman Sadovsky. They all have two, which is amazing. And then we have Conrad Orzel with an assignment at NHK Trophy. And I believe this will be his senior international Grand Prix debut. So good luck to him. First, I just think it's interesting that Keegan Messing was not given Skate Canada International. I understand that Nam Nguyen is the reigning national champion, but Keegan tends to compete better internationally. But hmm, that's something that's interesting to note. Nicholas Nadeau will also be at Skate Canada. He also has two Grand Prix assignments. I might have missed him earlier when I listed them off. And anywho, 2020 Worlds in Montreal is something all these men are going to think about because there's only one spot for the world team, for the Canadian men. And all of them are going to want to bring their A-game to every competition this season so that they are the most desirable to be placed on the team, the world team, despite the results at nationals. So... They're going to want to be so good if they don't compete really well at Canadian Nationals that they can be put on the team based on their body of work this season. I could see the pressure getting to some of them, and I could see some of them really hungry to prove themselves. So we shall see. Shout out to my friend Nolan, who loves Roman Sadovsky, and I do as well. He has really lovely skating qualities, skates to the most beautiful pieces of music, has amazing skills, and I'm excited to see him grow. We also have Nicholas Nadeau, who is kind of a wild card for me. At one point a few years ago, he seemed to be on his way to being the next big thing for Canadian men's figure skating, but Ah, injuries. Injuries are so unfortunate. It's going to be a rebuilding season for him. 
we'll just have to see. He usually has enjoyable programs. And then a part of me wishes that Joseph Fan was given a Grand Prix assignment, as I think he too can be the future of Canadian men's skating. And then next up, I will discuss the rest of the Americans. So Vincent Joe is the reigning world bronze medalist, which is huge. He ended his season on such a high, even winning the bronze medal at four continents before worlds. Super amazing for Vincent Joe. He's going to have a new level of confidence going into this upcoming season. And we will see how he does. I think he's going to do well. He in particular is probably going to be someone who's going to be benefited from the updated values of under-rotated jumps because he has a reputation of uh, under-rotating his quads and he does attempt a lot of them. So if he's not dinged for them, he could still rack up a lot of points. Let's see, shout out to Mai next. Mai, you love Jason Brown. He will be at Skate America. I'm so happy that you will be seeing him live in Vegas. He is one to look out for because of his beautiful skating skills, his flexibility, his spins, really lyrical style of skating to the music. On the flip side, he kind of lacks the technical skills. So he's working on a quad, a one quad. I think it's the quad sow cow. Last season, we saw him attempt it at almost every competition, but I haven't seen it perfect yet. Maybe this season we'll see it fully rotated and him standing up on it hopefully a few times. I think it could happen because it's been two seasons now training with Brian Orser at the Toronto Cricket Club. I'm wishing him all the best. And my personal favorite is Tomoki Hiwatashi. He is the reigning junior world champion. Yay! He has two assignments and Look, this season is just going to be about him building some experience, gaining some momentum, and getting some more consistency with the quads. Not that he's inconsistent with them, but he does fight for his landing so much. I would like to see a crisper landing from him this season on really all the jumps, but I like that he attacks everything and he fights to save every element. I wish all skaters could do that. And then we also have Camden Polkin, who is a popular American skater on the junior circuit, also kind of a hot and cold skater based on results. He's be he has beautiful skating qualities, but he lets the jumps slip away from him. He has so much potential though, so if he can put all the jumps together in a competition, I think he could really take his skating career to far places in the near future. Sorry, I'm looking down my notes, so I'm going to turn the page here. <laughs> Now that we're moving on from the Americans, let's discuss some other skaters. Junwon Cha of Korea has become a fan favorite. I'm not going to lie, I'm going to miss both of his programs from last season, but I'm pretty sure he'll come up with something entertaining as well because the crowd loves that from him. He was really riding on a high last season in the start because he won a medal at both of his Grand Prix events and even at the Grand Prix final. So that is huge. But then at the World Figure Skating Championships, he placed so low, I think like 19th place due to so many under rotation calls. So I hope that he has a different game plan this upcoming season so that he can have good and steady results or have a nice climb towards the end of the season. Because really, he is a skater that should not be outside of the top 10 at Worlds. I firmly believe that. Israel will also be represented by two skaters, Alexei Baichenko and Daniel Samoan. They each have an assignment and both can be really good competitors. Alexei is my personal favorite because I believe we're the same age. So I like to see him go out there and go for the difficult jumps. And he is capable of putting down a clean program with a quad. We will also see Boyang Jin of China. He has two assignments. Shout out to my friend Lupita. She's the biggest Boyang fan that I know. Uh, that's so awesome. You'll be able to see him at Skate America and he'll also be at Cup of China. And speaking of Cup of China, one of my most favorite male figure skaters is coming out of retirement, Han Yan of China will be competing at Cup of China. I am so excited. I was actually really sad a few years ago when he announced his retirement because he has some of the most beautiful 
and lyrical program. And he's also very expressive. The jumps can slide away from him because he's had a few injuries over the years, which is hard to see. But I remember him having a very beautiful triple axel. I don't care if he doesn't do a quad. He can just skate triples and I will enjoy any program of his. I believe right now he's training in the same camp as a Chinese pair, so hopefully that produces some good results. But I'm just so excited to see Han Yan compete again. Ah. And then the last thing I will touch on would be Italy, represented by Matteo Rizzo, who will compete twice. And actually I have one more thing. I am sad that I will not see another one of my favorite international skaters. It is Julian um, ZGE of Malaysia. He did have a Grand Prix assignment last season. I got to see him at Skate America. That was really cool. But he did not have a good showing at Worlds last year. And so I think that kind of uh, made him lower on the priority list of athletes to be invited to a Grand Prix event. So that's unfortunate. But things can change because today the date is June 21st. So there's room, a lot of room for change between now and the start of the season in Skate America. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you in the next one shortly. Goodbye.